Hey everybody, in this episode we're going to look at the upright bass that Dean Taba had sent me. And he had sent me two different tracks and they happen to be in stereo uh, for some reason instead of mono. I don't know why, but that's what he sent me, so that's what I'm going to work with. On the mixing side, the first thing I'm going to do is the same thing I do with most uh, bass tracks, right in the center as far as panning. There's two different inputs that he used. One was a microphone and the other one, and it, the microphone was pretty close up. It was like probably within a foot of the upright bass. And he had it pointing between the bridge and the fingerboard. Um, and generally when you point a microphone kind of in that direction, you get a little bit more of the finger noise, but you also get some good tone. The more you point it at the fingerboard, the more tone you get, the more you point it at the bridge, the more finger noise you're going to get. So if you want the character of the bass, that finger noise is sort of important to get on the microphone. So that's one of the tracks, and that's this uh, right here, this track here. And then he also had a DI that he had on the bass, and for the DI, um, the, the problem with the DI for an upright bass is there's not much high frequency. There's not much character at all. You get nothing but tone, which is fine in a live setting if you're trying to just get the sound of the bass out there in some fashion. It's easy uh, without having to deal with microphones and all that kind of stuff. But for purposes of like a nice pristine recording, it's not quite enough to work with. There's not much I can do with the uh, higher frequencies on the DI. And I'll play both of these so you can kind of hear uh, those different things. So let, let's just start with that and then we'll, um, we'll go from there. All right, so I'm going to start with the microphone. And I'm just playing from the head of the tune. Uh, here's microphone only with right now I got no EQ on it or any of that. Alright, and now this is the DI, same section. First thing I'm going to do is check the phase alignment. So I've got my auto align plug and it's set up here. So I'm going to use that section. Um, and I've got it on send channel two. And then if I go and uh, if I just play them both together, you'll hear, um, and I'll do the same section. I've got the, the DI bypassed right now, right? I had done this before and it was something like 367 samples off. Uh, I'm going to do a redetect this time out. But uh, when I bypass it, you'll hear it out of alignment. And if I play it that way and then I put it in and engage it, you'll hear it's just a little punchier, a little clearer. It's a little muted, so there's something out of phase, right? or the delay is what's causing it. So uh, so let me just run auto align and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, so now the result is that it says it's 361 samples off, and uh, it wasn't a polarity issue. It kept the polarity at normal, uh, where the polarity uh, switch button is off. Uh, so 361 samples, right? And I do the same thing that I did on uh, the drum tracks, which is I use the, uh, the time adjuster, and what was that, 361, and then I just punch in 361 samples 
and then uh, then I can disable auto align, right? And now everything's fine. Bypass it. All right, so that improves that. So that's the first step I'm going to do. Next, I'm going to look at is EQ and compression. So on the mic bass, I did a couple of different things. So I rolled off about 40K with a, with a low shelf. And then there was a little muddiness right around 107 and a half hertz. Uh, so I just brought that back about four and a half dB. There were a couple of nodes were some unattractive things. And then I added a little 5,000 hertz uh, just to get a little more definition from the microphone. And, and that's pretty much what I did there. I've disabled this 1,700 hertz. There is a rattle I hear occasionally when he plays, a little buzz on, on the microphone uh, version, not the DI. And, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to approach that yet. Um, but as far as, it's not super unattractive to me, but it has that little, you know, vibe, a little attitude. Uh, but if I find that it's something that is an item that I want to address, I'll deal with that. So, like, one of the things I experimented with was, uh, uh, was using, like, D-Click or something like that, where I can run that. There's a bunch of little different kinds of plugs. Uh, uh, Waves has some X click, X crackle to get rid of clicks and crackle kind of stuff. So the one I'm using, it's from Isotope. It's uh, called RxD click. Uh, the Isotope stuff is really nice. You know, you could use any of those kind of tools and that might help clean up a little bit of that. But for purposes of what I'm going to do in this video, uh, that's not a problem I'm going to solve yet. I'm going to do that a little later. I'm going to just make that and next inactive again so let's get back to our eq i'm just going to solo the microphone and uh show you kind of what i did here so this is bypassed right now so you hear the original and i kick it in Bypass. And back in. So that, that just did a little bit of sculpting here and there. Uh, the reason I dropped the 40 hertz out, um, two reasons. One, uh, there's a little bit of a noise floor uh, where Dean recorded at his house, and it kind of helps bring some of that out. Uh, some of that low frequency stuff that was going on in the room that he was recording in. The other thing is like on the drums, the kick drums kind of got some of that territory. So I'm trying to find a little space between the kick drum and the bass. Down the road, I might even do a little side chain thing where I have the bass follow the kick. Uh, but for now, this is just my initial EQ. If I go to the DI, I'm using a dynamic EQ because the high frequencies weren't doing much for me. I got I just shelved it. And then there's a little bit of definition around 760 hertz. And then there was a little, lot of muddiness that was happening around 130. So I have it dynamically like bouncing down so that when he's playing heavier, it's bringing it down a little quieter. And if he's playing heavier, it's bringing up that 759 hertz uh, a little bit more. It, it just adds a little more definition. And then I've got some other little, like, rampy things going on. So let's hear it bypassed and then with. So this is just the DI.
And now both of them together. Let's look at the next thing in the chain. So, um, same channel strip that I've been using on the whole project is this Lindell Neve 80 series. I do have a little cut on the microphone base at 10 kilohertz, just bringing it back about 4 dB. I'm at, doing a little add about 1.6 K, 2 dB added just to kind of get a little more finger definition and uh, I'm shelving at 70 and then at 8k I'm shelving on the microphone uh, I just didn't really hear too much up top so that's the EQ and the filter stuff there's no compression and there's uh, no gate and the reason for no gate is I really didn't f feel like even though the Dean recording room there was a little room tone in there the um, EQ kind of shelved out most of it, and it's a pretty quiet track, so it works pretty well on the microphone side of things. The DI, you're not going to hear anything except the instrument itself. So that's all I have on the Lindell. And uh, let's see, let me just solo the microphone track, and we'll do bypassed and then engaged. So that's, that's what I got there. And then let's hop over to the DI, get the Lindell up. So on the filtering, uh, I don't have anything on the high end on the filter. It's off here, off here. So I did some more, the same shelving, 70 hertz low shelf and the high shelf's uh, 18, um, or eight, I'm sorry. And then uh, I am doing some compression. It's a three to one compression. I'm running it at minus six dB as far as the threshold. Um, the typical gain, which is plus 2 dB, and I've got an auto recovery. Um, and the reason I add a little compression is it kind of helps smooth out the DI uh, leveling. Uh, that's all it's for. There's no gate going on. Uh, so just a little bit of compression there, and uh, that's pretty much it. So this is just the DI, starting with bypass, and then I'll engage it. Okay, so there's that, and now both of them together. Everything's on, on the EQ and the channel strips. Okay, so that's pretty much the majority of the bass stuff that I've got going on. There's no reverb on it. Um, it just doesn't need it. I'm going to play it with the whole track so you can kind of hear it with the mix so far. And keep in mind this is still a rough mix, uh, but I'm just dialing in each individual component. So here we go from the head. So that's pretty much it for, for this episode. Uh, the next episode, I'm going to do the electric bass. So I'll see you guys there. Take care.